Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I have a few new life updates for everyone. Well, it might not be new for everyone because I kind of posted it on my social media everywhere, but I graduated again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's right, now I have two degrees, a bachelor's and a master's of public health. Here is my diploma. Yeah, there's absolutely nothing in here. This is just a placeholder. And another reason why I don't have my diploma yet is because I didn't technically graduate yet. So what happened was I actually have a few units that I need to finish up during the summer and I'll be completely done by August. However, they didn't have a graduation ceremony for, you know, people graduating in August. Only, they only had the big one in May. They kind of just corralled everyone who was graduating in the year 2022 together and just made them walk at the same time. But that story's a little lengthy to explain, so I just tell people I graduated. Justifiable that it's on my resume that I'm a graduate, right? Right? So this video might be a little premature, but I feel like I spent enough time at USC to have gotten a real feel on what it's like to get a master's of public health. And I thought it'd be really great to make this video for everyone who's wondering or considering about getting their own master of public health. So that being said, let's get to the video. There are a variety of reasons why you would do an MPH. That was definitely the first question I asked a lot of peers and professors when I first was getting to know them. Though the answers aren't really ones you expect. You have like the traditional ones where people want to be epidemiologists or um, go into public health policy or travel the world to fix public health problems, which I find pretty cool. But there are also some people who are getting their MPH as a stepping stone to greater education, such as P a PhD or MD. There are also many already existing healthcare professionals, such as nurses, who wanted a more administrative job at the end of the day. Of course, several people who have already been working for a while in public health and advanced themselves in their career by getting an MPH. 2020 was a really confusing time, not just professionally, but also personally for me. I feel like I really didn't know myself and a lot of the decisions I made was really driven through fear. Like fear that I had nothing to do, fear that I wasn't, you know, being a good member of the society. For some reason, I had to go to grad school in order to, you know, move forward in my life. Of course, I knew that I wanted to be in the healthcare field. I just didn't want to run a ton of sick people, I guess. After graduating from UCI with my bachelor's in 2020, I had a six month internship and several of my supervisors there actually had an MPH and they really promoted it to me. That was another reason why I decided to try to get an MPH myself. I mean, going into grad school is a huge financial and career choice that you can make. So I really recommend that if you're not 100% sure if you want to go to grad school, get a job, experience life, travel, you know, good stuff that you can do when there's not a pandemic around, and then go into grad school if you really want to. So I was in both the online program and the in-person program at USC. I know, I was in both. How was I in both? I will explain. So when I was first applying for an MPH program, I was only looking at online programs. There are a lot of online master's programs out there, and I think the number has like rose a lot because of the pandemic and virtual learning. These online programs are obviously geared towards working professionals. So most of the classes were around like 6 p.m., 7 p.m., and I was hoping to find a job where I could work from like nine to five and then later go to class. So I enrolled, I got in, I was in an online program for two semesters. Throughout those times, I set my job application like everywhere and I just got ghosted or rejected. So I didn't find a job. Because I didn't find a job, I had like a lot of spare time on my hands. Because um, the online program moves a lot slower than the on-campus program. They really want you to take only two classes at a time every semester. So that meant I only had two classes every week. Hell, I even started his YouTube channel during that time. Before the beginning of my third semester at USC, I decided to ask my counselor if it was possible for me to switch onto the on-campus program. And lo and behold, it was. I transferred around January 2021. 
And up until then, the on-campus program were actually virtual too. So I technically didn't really miss out on anything. Yeah, moving to the on-campus program was probably the best decision I ever made because of my learning style. It exponentially increased my social life. But I'm here to outline some of the key differences I saw between the online program and the on-campus program. So as I said a billion times before, the online program is completely geared towards the working professional, the person with a family who doesn't really have a lot of time for studying or school. It was definitely 100% the youngest there or among the youngest. Like high key, my age kind of made it a lot easier for me to navigate the classes than everybody else did. I'm not saying that being older is a deterrent from doing grad school. I think if you can handle all those things at the same time, you are superwoman, okay? Because there were a lot of moms out there. I noticed that um, some people sh really struggled with doing the online assignments, not because they didn't understand material, but because they weren't really used to using computers or they never had to use Excel before. And these are things that like people from my generation, we've been doing since high school. So that's why I felt like I had a bit of an advantage. Um, I was actually expecting the MPH program to be a lot more difficult than my bachelor's degree, but it really was not that difficult. So on the on-campus program was at USC. The people on campus were more my age. They were in their early 20s. The MPH program shares a lot of classes with PhD students. I found that a little unfair because they had years of training as the PhD kids are definitely scoring higher. Classes were definitely more challenging than they were in the online program. They also moved at a much faster pace. However, I feel like I learned a lot more and I got more, you know, bang for my buck. You have a free gym membership now, right? I just thought there were a lot more benefits to going in person. So in conclusion, I don't really recommend the on the online program if you don't really have anything else going on in your life such as having a family or having another job if you have the time to focus all your energy on education then i really think you should do the on-campus program instead that was just what worked for me and i don't regret it so really quick i want to talk about how much i paid for usc i'm gonna get my notebook out because i don't really remember these numbers so I took out financial aid, FAFSA, loans for college. The loan that I took out was called the Federal Unsubsidized Graduate Loan, Direct Loan. I think it was the Federal Unsubsidized Direct Loan. I think that was the full name. Subsidizing means that um, the government pays your interest while you are in school. So you're not accruing interest while you're studying. Now, undergrads can ask for an unsubsidized loan. Grad students cannot. So you are accruing interest that you have to eventually pay off. But luckily for me, there has there was a pandemic. So much good and bad came out of this pandemic, I swear. But anyway, one good is that that paused student loan repayments and interest. So I haven't been accruing any interest this entire time. So maybe going back to school wasn't a completely bad idea after all. So as you guys know, USC, the University of Spoiled Children, is not a cheap school. I paid $82,500 and that's just tuition only, okay? I'm not including parking, I'm not including all the gas I paid to commute to class and back. I'm not even including rent or food because I lived at home the entire time. That number was for tuition only. I don't know why it's like this, but the online program and the on-campus program have the same cost. So you really do get more bang for your bucket if you go on campus. So that number has been making me a little nervous, but people have been telling me that no worries, you'll pay it back in 10 years, everything will be fine. So, you know, we'll see. Number one, you will learn statistics. Even if your concentration doesn't have a lot of statistics, like maybe you're a policy person, you're still gonna have to take at least a few biostatistics classes because that's what public health is kind of based on. It's based on research, it's based on like data. And the last time I took stats was about five years ago 
in high school <laughs> so you could say i wasn't like completely prepared for it anyway there are a lot of resources online that can help supplement your classes if you need help number two you will be expected to program yeah this was like high key what everyone was really surprised about at usc we were taught how to use three programming languages spss stata and sas or sas these classes kind of supplement the biostats classes that you have to take i really suggest that if you want to get the most out of this degree those are classes and those are the skills that you really should focus on learning because those skills you can put directly on your resume and even if you don't work in public health one day, those programming skills will definitely help land you a job in some, somewhere else in data analysis, in research, anywhere. Number three, find your practicum early. The practicum is like a little internship that you're, you'll be required to do 300 hours or so of an internship at a nonprofit or organization of your choice. It just has to be approved. It's recommended that you do this at the end of your program, but I really suggest you find that practicum really early on so you avoid like the scramble that comes at the end of the school year it's required to graduate so um start looking early there are tons of resources luckily usc had a lot of really helpful counselors and professors who are always down to help there are so many different ways to find a practicum in time but anyway just like talk to people you never know that person sitting next to you in class might just hook you up with a practicum or even better a job after you graduate So that's about all I had to tell you. I feel like I have learned so much about the community of public health. I've learned so much about how our system works and how many disparities exist within it. I feel very different than when I first graduated in 2020 from UC Irvine. I feel a lot more confident. I feel a lot more ready to go into the next stage of my life as an adult, I guess. Right now, I feel really optimistic for the future. Yeah, I just got a job offer to um, the LA Department of Public Health and I accepted. Yeah. So I'm really excited. I'm really excited to be starting my job, my full-time job there. My first full-time job ever. Oh my god. <laughs> I am now like an official member of the turning wheel that is called capitalism. So as cheesy as it is to say this out loud, I feel like I have a very positive outlook on the future compared to two years ago and I really can't wait. I hope in some way this video was really interesting and thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next time with a less chatty video. Bye!